you know, big surprise that two of the biggest platforms on the internet are corrupt and don't enforce their rules properly. But, you know, if you've been on the internet, you already knew that that was a thing. And if you're unaware, today we're going to be talking about the Jideon situation with Twitch. And we're going to touch on the Corey situation on YouTube. I addressed it a little bit in my video about uh, Markiplier. So if you want to hear my complete thoughts on what happened with Corey, you can go check that out. But yeah, we're just gonna jump right into it because this is quite fucked up and honestly just ridiculous at this point, but I'm not surprised. So we'll start with uh, Gideon and Twitch. Basically, if you're unaware, Gideon used to stream on Twitch, but he got banned for a uh, quote-unquote hate rating Pokimane. All he did was tell his viewers to go spam L plus ratio in her chat when he raided her. Which I mean, should he be suspended for that? I mean, maybe, I guess, that's about as far as I'd go. But should he have been permanently banned? Fuck no. And Jideon ended up throwing up multiple examples in a recent video he made. I'll leave that in the description if you guys want to check it out. He addressed a whole bunch of different situations with Twitch, Twitch enforcing their rules unevenly or unfairly across all creators. But specifically, it was women that got the lightest bans for the most offensive offenses. And the men would get the worst punishments with the things that were the least offensive. And a couple of situations he showed was this recent ban of this girl who was literally getting fucked on stream, some shit that you could find on the hub and you shouldn't be finding on Twitch. She got seven days for getting raw dogged on stream. Yeah, tell me how that makes sense. Uh, Cause I quite, I don't understand. And I'd like to think that I, I'm not stupid, but I'm not that smart. But I can tell you what, that makes no fucking sense. Another situation he ended up bringing up was this girl on Twitter said that she wanted to kill herself and shoot people at Twitch headquarters and she ended up getting a permanent ban the first time. Like when that tweet was all that she released, she ended up getting a permanent ban. That's fine. Should have ended there, right? Uh, no, she made an apology tweet or an apology letter to Twitch saying that, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean it. And it went from a permanent ban to a 22 day ban. And it's not like situations like that haven't happened before. Years back, someone said that they were gonna shoot up YouTube, and they did. So, the fact that a woman quite literally threatened the lives of people at Twitch HQ with a situation that's not completely out of the picture, like, like it could easily happen, and you brought that ban from a permanent ban to a 22-day ban, are you being fucking for real right now? If someone threatens to shoot up your headquarters and quite literally kill your workers and themselves, get them off the platform and completely erase their history on the platform. They shouldn't even be a part of that. But since it's a woman, it's fine. One of the last two situations we're going to talk about with Jideon was he going to bring up the situation where a girl was finger blasting herself on stream. Uh, yeah, I got banned for three days. Apparently you can finger blast yourself in the next week, but you can't send quote unquote hate raids to people because hate raids and what Jideon did are completely different things. But if you want to classify as what Jideon did as hate rating, fine. But they're completely different things. And now a situation that Jideon brought up with uh, a guy, not a girl this time. If you guys don't know, or if you guys don't watch Twitch, Kai Sinat is like the biggest growing tw uh, Twitch streamer right now. I think he's like top three on the platform right now with like average viewers and you know like statistical shit like that. Uh, Twitch has not acknowledged him once. They have not acknowledged one of their rising and biggest creators. And he hasn't gotten a new deal which a lot of streamers have better deals with Twitch so that they get more of the revenue. Uh, apparently, according to according to Jideon, uh, Kai has not had that type of deal yet. So as one of the biggest rising Twitch streamers, Twitch has acknowledged them once. And Twitch has done this in the past. They've acknowledged some of their bigger streamers before, even if they just tweeted at them. You know, it's not out of the ordinary for them to do that. But now since it's Kai, who a lot of people are saying is because he's a black guy, which isn't ridiculous to say because Twitch you know they're kind of they're kind of corrupt some might say and they're quite wonky it's not ridiculous to say because he's black that he's not getting acknowledged by twitch however twitch did acknowledge him by giving him a month ban for saying monkey on stream and it wasn't used in a racial context and even if it was kai's black i mean he can say that but it wasn't used in a racist way and i don't know if twitch just forgot that like monkeys are like an actual animal i, I don't know if like they forgot about that but as crazy as it sounds, there are indeed monkeys in the wild, and in zoos, and they're animals. It's not just a strictly racial term. I, I didn't, I don't know if Twitch knows that, but Kai got banned for saying monkey, which, which Twitch apparently took as being racist, which makes no fucking sense, but he got banned for a month, uh, someone finger blasted themselves, got three days, 
Someone got fucked on stream seven days. Someone threatened to shoot up Twitch HQ 22 days. Ajinion says, hey, go into Poke Mainstream and say L plus ratio, permanent ban. One of these things are not like the other in the sense of what he did and his punishment. One of them's not like the other. And like Gideon said in his video, he, he doesn't care if he's back on Twitch. He doesn't give a fuck about the platform anymore, which is you know how you should view it because quite literally they don't value any of their content creators at all. And since Twitch is a private company, you know they can do what they want, I guess. But banning someone because they quote unquote hate rated somebody is pretty ridiculous. But when you got women on here basically giving people OnlyFans content, kind of ridiculous if you ask me. So yeah, know, hopefully the Gideon situation clears up. And I mean, I don't really know how it's gonna clear up. I mean, I guess hopefully Twitch, you know, gets their shit together and enforces their rules properly. But, you know, that's like basically asking hell to freeze over. It's just not gonna happen. And uh, so now moving on to Corey's situation. If you guys don't know, Corey Kenshin is a YouTuber on the platform with a hefty amount of subscribers and is very successful. And he's a very great YouTuber. He ended up uploading this video called The Mortuary Assistant and ended up getting age restricted and demonetized. He has a YouTube rep, hey, what's going on? Like this makes no sense. It's not like this game has been uploaded before. This is all people are uploading right now. Well, why is mine getting demonetized and nobody else's isn't? The YouTube rep said, oh, this part of the video is a problem. You know, we'll look into it. And Corey put on his Sherlock Holmes hat and went snooping out and found Markiplier's video had the exact same thing. He then showed that to his YouTube rep and he was like, damn Sherlock Holmes, that's pretty impressive. I'm gonna show this to, you know, the big ups at YouTube. I don't know. I don't know who exactly they showed it to. I don't know how that company works other than the fact that it seems that most of them don't. But a day or two later, Corey checks his video. It's not age restricted. It's not demonetized. Life's good. For about a day. Because it ends up getting age restricted and demonetized again. So that means that someone went and unage restricted it, remonetized it. And so somebody saw it and watched it and was like, all right, this is fine. And then either that same person or someone else at YouTube was like, hey, that's not fine. It's fine if Mark Blair does it, but it's not fine if Corey does it. Redemonetize that and re age restrict it. Now, you fucking peasant. And then Corey said that it's basically because YouTube plays favorites and there's some people there that are racist, or it's a combination of the both of them. And I honestly couldn't agree more, but I feel like we all knew that YouTube was like this in the first place. YouTube, since there's no competition, can do quite literally whatever the hell they want. And we just gotta live with it, sadly. I mean, that's just how it is. I mean, it's fucked up that people like Corey get completely mistreated by the YouTube rules and guidelines when people like Mark Player can do the exact same thing and get away with it. And quite honest with you, it, it shouldn't be demonetized in the first place. Like, I've seen the clip, it's not bad. And this is not a shot on Mark Player either, by the way. Mark Player is one of the goats. But YouTube ha does unfairly treat content creators, whether that means that they get to slip by the rules or they don't. You know, it all, I guess it basically depends on how much you suck YouTube's dick, apparently. Whoever gives the best sucky sucky five bucky ends up getting the best treatment, apparently. And Corey's video is on trending. It has like over six million views. It's going around like crazy. And as it should be, because, you know, unfair treatment on YouTube, it's common. Sadly, it's common. The more that people talk about it, the more attention is brought to it. And I feel like then maybe there might be some change. But then again, it's YouTube, so they're probably not going to change it at all. Because this has been going on for years and years and years. And it's going to keep happening. And to shed further light on Corey's video, a Corey is one of like the most quote-unquote PG and like one of the most family-friendly channels on YouTube. And you know, when usually you say family-friendly, you know, you kind of got a bad rap to it because it's like usually really cringy or some shit. But Corey's great. Corey's actually one of the few quote-unquote family-friendly YouTubers that are very enjoyable to watch. You know, he's awesome. You know, the dude doesn't even swear. He ends up, he literally censors the swears that are in the games he's playing. So there's no reason why any of his content at all should be demonetized. That is unless you're YouTube and you see that his content's fine, but you see that he's black, so you demonetize him. That's quite, it's not a ridiculous parallel to draw. I would hope that that's not the case because that's really fucked up to have racist people working at a platform where there's a lot of people of color that are creating content, whether that be black, Asian, whatever. People are out here making content and some of it's really great. And the fact that some people are getting mistreated because of the color of their skin is fucked up. So hopefully that's not the reason why it got demonetized, but I mean, it's looking more and more likely that that's what it is. And the thing with YouTube is we'll quite literally never know because they're never going to address this. They're never going to talk about it. They're just gonna wait till the new controversy hits and then you know what they're gonna do with that? They're not gonna talk about that either. Cause that's just how YouTube operates. They don't tell you anything at all. 
I don't know if Twitch knows this, but Genion and Pokemon have completely made up, and they're like actually like friends now. They have actually. I mean, when Genion was at that Twitch event that he went, they snuck into, he literally met up with Pokemon after. If they're completely fine. They made up, but apparently Twitch still holding a grudge. And it's funny because Twitch themselves have said that they take the fact that if you show remorse for what you did, that they will take that into account with your ban. And that girl that I mentioned earlier ended up making that apology to Twitch about, you know, wanting to shoot the place up. And they took her ban to a lower amount of days. Jinyan did the same thing, and nothing happened with him. So, Twitch is just very inconsistent when it comes to that. And the problem with this shit is, is that it's not consistent. Like, if it was consistent, then you would know what breaks the rules and what doesn't. But the problem is, is that it's so inconsistent that you could be banned for something that someone else is doing, and they're not getting banned. So what I think most people are asking for is some form of consistency because it's just hard to tell what you can even do on the platforms that you're on anymore. Be consistent. Consistency is key. The only thing that Twitch and YouTube are good at is being consistently fucking wrong and consistently banning people for quite literally no reason at all. You know, in both situations here, we have people that have been mistreated and the rules are unevenly enforced on both of them. And so it's just quite unfair and ridiculous. You know, it's just crazy that two of the biggest social media platforms on the planet can play favorites and may be racist and can completely get away with it because there's no competition for either one of them. It's a sad world we live in where we limit people because of the color of their skin. But uh, yeah, that's basically all I got. You know, if you guys like the video, you can like the video. You know what buttons help me. You can press me if you want. I'm not going to tell you what to do. But uh, yeah, justice for Gideon, justice for Corey, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace. Uh -huh.